Hello again, everybody. I'm Evan Massoud. Welcome to the Fred TV Sports Report. The familiar garden gnome is synonymous with friendship. Gnome Surf, founded by former hilltopper Christopher Anteo, is now the number one surf therapy organization globally. With the beaches here in New England only usable for summer months, and with the public demand for more sessions, Gnome Surf has evolved into a 12-month program by incorporating pool and land-based instruction. The hope is that dry land exercises that you see here, captured last spring at Henry Lord Community School, will reach additional children while maintaining beneficial areas of core body strength and coordination, as well as emotional healing and overall wellness. Last week, while Chris was hanging 10 with one group on the South Shore, he sent members of his team to the Jarabek pool here at Durfee. We had the opportunity to speak with his wellness manager on the benefits of utilizing smaller, more controlled environments like the pool, as opposed to the ocean. With the land stuff, we're able to work on some balance stuff on land, and this is now taking it to the next level. Using the power and happiness of the water, I've already seen kids today that were super nervous, and they've already popped right up and stood up on boards. So again, it's using all that core strength. It's promoting inclusivity. We have um, all different people. We have peer models here helping our athletes. Um, so it's promoting inclusivity and giving these kids the confidence to believe that they can achieve anything they want. We, we've been able to service a lot of kids through our land-based program, and again, and we're, we're reaching kids that might not have access to the beach. And the pool is open year-round, so that's like the other benefit. Approximately three dozen kids took part in the one-day pool lesson at Durfee. This partnership with Fall River Public Schools was paid for through a mental health grant. Both the Gnome Surf team and the Director of Health and Physical Education, Daniel Fitzgerald, hope to maintain and eventually expand this collaboration to include all of the schools in the district. And it's not just surfing. The staff are rigorously trained to incorporate exercise, art, and music as well. Gnome Surf is a 501c3 nonprofit organization with a mission statement centered around inclusivity and acceptance for all kids of all abilities. All right, let's check on one of our summer teams now in the East Coast Football League, the Troy City Titans. Titans got some revenge last weekend against the Randolph Oilers, a 7-6 victory, giving them their third win of the season and putting them into a two-way tie for third place with the Granite State Destroyers in the East Conference. Both teams now sporting three and four records. This is significant because those two teams play each other tomorrow night. Let's hope that the weather doesn't become a Debbie Downer with the tropical storm passing through. The first meeting between the Titans and the, and the Destroyers was played here at Mac Aldridge Field back on June 29th, a game Troy City feels they gave away. Granite State won by a final of just six to nothing. Saturday's winner will hold sole possession of third place at the end of the night behind the Mill City Eagles and the Valley Generals. Kickoff is scheduled for 6 p.m. at St. Anselm College in New Hampshire. The Durfee Hilltopper Athletic Foundation recently held its biggest annual fundraiser, the Bob Hargraves Hilltopper Golf Classic. Unfortunately, this year, Mother Nature wasn't too kind to our golfers. Our camera crew arrived at the Fall River Country Club in the rain prior to the scheduled noon shotgun start. But after speaking with event coordinators, we and tournament participants were given the bad news that tea time was being pushed back more than two hours due to the heavy rains that carried into the morning. So, while golfers socialized, we caught up with Foundation Treasurer Melissa Panchley. She explained that the nonprofit continues to raise money for Durfee athletes in order to spend money for Durfee athletes, with more dollars in recent years going towards supplemental clinics and summer leagues rather than new equipment. I believe it's really important not only uh, you know to learn the skills, but there's a lot of team building that happens at, at, at those kind of things, um, and so I think it, it provides you know somewhere and something for them to do in the summer at times. So it, there's a lot of different benefits um, from these leagues and these camps um, that go really beyond skills, but of course skills is part of it. 
In a post on the Foundation's Facebook page following the event, organizers thanked sponsors and participating golfers. Through their support, over $15,000 was raised, which will go directly back to Durfee athletes. This brings the total funds raised by the Durfee Hilltopper Athletic Foundation to over $220,000 since its inception over a decade ago. And hopefully next year will be just a bit drier so we can get that drone in the air. The aerials at the country club are spectacular. Now, here at Durfee last weekend, Skip Lewis Field was the site of a one-pitch charity softball tournament between the Fall River Police Department, the Fall River Fire Department, and the Fall River Public Schools. Our cameraman David Montero got these shots for us. Saturday was a scorcher, but as Deputy Fire Chief Neil Furtado jokingly told me over the phone, Firefighters are used to the heat. Furtado said this event came together in a short amount of time and he hopes there will be more like it in the future. The majority of the income will be allocated to the Fall River VFW post, uh, 486 on Bedford Street, to help them with roof repairs. Additionally, a small portion of monies will be put toward the Fallen Police Officers Fund. After the firefighters were victorious against the officers, the Fall River Public Schools also defeated PD, setting up a fire versus teacher final with the school district taking the championship game 8-6. to six. Now, this isn't the first time fire and police have battled it out in a sports venue. Our Fred TV students covered the annual Badge versus Badge charity basketball game last April. So be on the lookout for more interdepartment duels in the future. And when from one baseball diamond to another, we'll finish the week at Chew Park as the Fribble regular season comes to a close. This week, a rematch from last year's finals in a game that will most likely determine first place. Nick Decibus getting the nod for the Braves in their second to last game of the regular season. A win would secure the season series against the Dodgers as well. Top two, Dodgers with an opportunity to take an early lead here. Men at the corners, one down. Sean Doris at the plate, chops it down the line. Bobbled initially, but the out recorded by Chris Chagnon. In the back door comes Jose Arrieta with the game's first run. one nothing Dodgers. Now, bottom half of the inning, after a two-out wild pitch, got Luke Baum back in to tie the game. John DeCarmo gives it a ride to right center. That ball looked like a pop-up, and the wind, like last time, carrying it deep. Nick Decibus scores. The Braves have their first lead, 2-1 to one after 2. We'll jump to the bottom of the fourth now. 3-3 three, three score. Braves with a man at third. One out. DeCarmo at the dish again. This one, a pop-up to right. Tough play down the line. It's going to fall fair. Decibus comes home to pull ahead again. DeCarmo, his second RBI. 4-3 Braves. Later in the inning, 5-3 the score. Braves not done. Josh Blaze up with two down. Takes it the other way. Fair ball down the left field line. Brad Hartwell trots home from third. And the Braves led 8-3 to three after four. But listen to this. After our camera left, the Dodgers showed why they're the defending champs. They outscored the Braves 13-1 to one over the final five frames. They win it convincingly 16-9 to nine the final. With that, the Dodgers clinch a first place finish for the second straight season. 15 wins for the defending champions with the Braves in a close second. The win also gives the Dodgers the series victory against the Braves. Now, as we pull off the playoff brackets here, the matchups are set. The Dodgers are the number one seed. They host the Smokies and the Braves as the number two seed, hosting the Twins in the bottom half of the bracket. The Twins upset the Braves on Monday night, 9-6. to six. So they take a one nothing lead in the best of three series. Now the Dodgers, after getting rained out on Tuesday, were supposed to play last night, but disappointingly the Smokies were unable to field the team. They were forced to forfeit, so the Dodgers go up 1-0 in their series by default. Now, as of this broadcast, the Dodgers and Smokies are scheduled to play Game 2 of their series on Sunday, but the Braves and Twins have not announced Game 2 for their semifinal round. So we'll wait to hear. When we reconvene in two weeks on August 23rd, more action from Chew Park as the Fribble playoffs continue, highlights from the Troy City Titans' final regular season home game, and a special feature story you won't want to miss. And that's all you're going to get on that one. For our studio crew, Alex Mello, Daniel Keating, and our director, Mike Ferreira, I'm Evan Massoud. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you back here in two weeks.